Well, good morning, everyone. Heath Putzel with Keep Your Finger in the Text. It is Thursday. It's time for another Keep Your Finger in the Text live report. Here's what's going on at Keep Your Finger in the Text. As you can tell by my banner here, they have a very special guest. So I want to get through uh, some of the updates here so we get a chance to talk with Tom and hear uh, quite a bit from him. Um, one of the things that's going on is Monday nights, we did take a pause for Memorial Day, uh, but we did go ahead and we're working on our last study session. Um, with Romans 4. So in taking reps, we are working through Romans 4. We are putting the finishing touches on Romans 4. It meets Monday night, 7 p.m. Central Time, 8 p.m. Eastern Time. It is for new and or experienced preachers who are just getting started in preaching. Maybe you've had some previous training before. And the goal here is not always do we get to day after day, week after week, month after month, prepare sermons. Um, so sometimes it's a matter of how do I get my hands around this? And you're going to hear probably a little bit more about this as well. But how do you get your hands around this and really dive into a text, get to understand the tools, principles, and strategies of building a sermon outline? And that's the goal. Our goal with taking reps is to be able to work for six to eight weeks, give or take, on a text. I know we're a little bit uh, more with Romans 4, but that's because we're really working on refining our communication. But as we work through the roadmap to rhetoric, the foundational steps that we take in our workshop, we get a chance after about six to eight weeks to bring home a sermon outline. And that way you can print it off. You can add some of your own touches to it. You can slide it in your Bible. And here's another text that you can preach in your ministry context in the open air. Our goal is to take about a year as we roll through this, not just a year, but as we are ongoing on Monday nights, our goal throughout a year is to be about six to eight sermons that we can go ahead and formulate. We've heard from God. It's not something that we're reading from commentaries or anybody else. We're working with a team. The team is about eight to 10 people with two or three more that just joined out of the workshop. But we gather around the word. We sharpen each other. We, we check each other's blind spots. And again, we are really honing in on hearing from God and preparing an outline. So it's a beautiful time to see the tools, principles, and strategies of what does the text mean and then what does it say? So come join me. Uh, all of our sessions are recorded. So if you miss a Monday night, you won't miss a thing because you'll have access to the recording to go back and review it. But come on out to sfoi.org, click on evangelist info, click on keep your finger in the text taking reps, Monday night, 7 p.m. Central Time, 8 p.m. Eastern Time. I'd love to see you there. Coming up, we finished up a couple of weeks ago, we finished up our Isaiah workshop, our spring workshop. And now we're getting ready here in just a couple of weeks to kick off our summer in Exodus. Our summer in Exodus. Again, the workshop is for new era and or experienced preachers who are going to commit or recommit to expository preaching in the open air. And yes, it is possible to preach expository sermons in the open air. So coming up, Tuesday, June 13th, 7 p.m. Central Time, 8 p.m. Eastern Time. We're going to take 12 weeks in Exodus. I know I, I kind of put out a Facebook post that the Israelites spent 40 years wandering in the desert. We're not going to take 40 years. We're going to take 12 weeks and use Exodus as a backdrop. And we're going to work through the tools, principles, and strategies of a keep your finger in the text workshop, roadmap to rhetoric, using Exodus. And you'll be amazed at this captivating book. Um, it's a book of liberation. It's a book of redemption. It's a book of discipline. It's a book of God um, enacting his plan and continuing to enact his plan of redemption for his people. So if you want to find out more information about that, go on out to sfoi.org forward slash keep your finger in the text or go on out to sfoi.org, click on evangelist info, click on keep your finger in the text, click on get started, and we will provide you with the logistical information and come join us as we kick off our workshop on June 13th. Speaking of workshops, sometimes Monday nights, Tuesday nights don't work out for you. Maybe 7 p.m. doesn't work out for you. If you'd like to bring a local workshop or a virtual workshop to your area, I'd love to be able to talk to you. Reach out to me, heathputzel at gmail.com or 920-322-5089. This is an opportunity for us to tailor a workshop to help you strengthen and enhance your preaching and teaching of God's word. Some of the different venues we've been at are small group Bible studies. We've done um, the before the Super Bowl outreach on Thursdays. We've done a four hour session of an abbreviated workshop, the Circleville Pumpkin Festival, a couple of the other areas. And we've even gone international as part of 
bringing a local workshop to the area. So again, if you'd like to bring a local workshop to your area, reach out to me, heathputzel at gmail.com or the number 920-322-5089. Love to be able to talk to you about the logistics of bringing a keep your finger in the text workshop to your area. Just mention the workshops. What that means is a local workshop is coming up June 19th to the 23rd. It's in Birchwood, Tennessee. If you have the time, you have the means, you have the availability, come join us in Birchwood. It's going to be four full days of sitting under the word. We're going to be immersed in prayer. We're going to be talking about the word. It is the George Whitfield Program Annual Summer Fellowship Conference. You do not have to be a part of the program to join us. But if you are interested in going vocational in your ministry of preaching in the open air, there is track one, Bill Adams, chief evangelist of SFOI, will take you through the transition of vocational ministry and what does that look like and all the disciplines that are involved. And I have the privilege of bringing a workshop in track two. So again, if you're not part of the George Whitfield program, but you want to spend four days sitting under the word, come join the workshop. If you want to strengthen and enhance your preaching, we're going to be focusing on biblical theology and preaching, the grand story, the grand redemption of God's plan from Genesis to Revelation. And how does that really impact us and hone us as gospel open air preachers? You will not want to miss this. Find more information out on SFOI.org. Click on events, January to June, and come join us in Birchwood coming up here in just a couple of weeks. Again, four full days in prayer, in talking about the word, in being immersed in the word, in preaching the word, all things centered around the word of God. So come join us, find out more information either on SFOI.org or go on out to the George Whitfield program and find the annual summer fellowship conference. One other thing I'd like to mention before I bring on our special guest, and that is, again, coming up July 17th. You're going to want to mark your calendars for this. July 17th. This is a book that has been instrumental to me. A couple of years ago, as a Super Bowl outreach team leader in Los Angeles, we were talking about the Office of the Evangelist. I had the privilege and the opportunity of reading this book, The Forgotten Officer, talking about the forgotten office of the evangelist. And I think a lot of the contention sometimes between the church and the evangelist itself is if the evangelist is truly called and Christ has called the evangelist to the church and the church doesn't recognize the office, there's probably going to be a little contention there. But anyway, I, I digress on that point. But The Forgotten Officer, it is a great book. And I will tell you what's special about July 17th is we have connected with the author, Joe Kaler, and he is willing to teach us for four weeks on July 17th, that may change, but as far as I know of foundationally right now, July 17th for four weeks, we will be with Joe Kaler as he takes us through the book, The Forgotten Officer. Great time to go out and get the book, read it, be prepared for it. But if you want to find out more information and or be on a list to find out the logistics or even register for it, it is free. Info at SFOI.org. Info at SFOI.org. Great book. I highly recommend, again, that you get the book, read it, and come join us on July 17th, Monday um, Monday afternoon for four weeks, listening to Joe Kaler teach us about the forgotten officer, the evangelist. All right. So as I mentioned before, I have a special guest with me. Um, at Keep Your Finger in the Text, you know we are all about providing a path to practical, persuasive, powerful preaching. And what that means is oftentimes on the live reports, we talk about blog posts, we talk about books, we talk about podcasts. We bring on evangelists and or pastors who are passionate about preaching, passionate about sharing the gospel and foundational gospel inside the Word of God. And I have special guest Tom McLaughlin from CCN. He's a campus leader at uh, University of Texas, Austin. So let me go ahead and bring Tom on here. Morning, Tom. How you doing? Good morning. How you doing? Good, good. Uh, thank you for being a little patient with that long intro. Oh, no problem. <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> so... Good. Tom McLaughlin, uh, campus leader for uh, University of Texas in Austin. Hook them horns. Um, yeah, my with Chris there. there you go. <laughs> <laughs> with Christian Collegiate Network, uh, it's a pleasure. Thank you for joining oh, me this morning. Thank you for having me. <laughs> so I want to start off. Uh, we're going to kind of do a tr little transition for those that aren't familiar with sometimes the interviews. I start off talking about introducing you to Tom 
as his his journey to Christ, as well as his ministry. Um, and then, of course, his his connection with sports fan outreach, as well as keep your finger in the text. So I want to start off, Tom, if you can share with us just a little bit. How did you come into faith in Christ? Well, this was a, a long time ago um, when I was it was at the end of my sophomore year in high school. Um, my brother was uh, going to Scottsdale, Arizona Junior College, and I didn't know at the time, but uh, he had started going to Bible studies and and he became a Christian. And then when he came home, he was like so excited that he had to share something with me. It was like, OK, you know, because I, I was raised Catholic, you know, okay. my parents Catholic, my grandparents, their parents. I mean, it was this generational Catholic and as uh you know i have uh two brothers and so my older brother's two years older than me and uh my brother my dad kind of forced us into being altar boys and okay. yeah I, I just remember being terrified i mean the whole time you know um and you know to me going to the catholic church was you know was, was really depressing i remember one time uh coming back from church we're driving by a Baptist church. I go, Dad, what do they believe? You know, yeah. And he's like, Oh, they they worship the devil. So <laughs> there I am, eight years old, thinking that all Baptists are devil worshippers. So it's, it was pretty stressful time. So when my brother came back and he had a you know a King James Bible, which I had never seen before, because uh, right. we didn't have a Bible in the house, uh, mm -hmm. and he just started opened up scriptures, just started sharing. Uh, you know, I think it was, you know, uh, the Gospel of John, chapter three, you know, that, you know, you can't even see the kingdom of heaven unless you're born again. He just right. went through scripture and, you know, God just, you know, he just opened my eyes and ears. And and that's when I uh, repented and put my trust in Christ. And, mm. and I was on fire, to say the least, as far as uh, and I didn't know it at the time, but um I had gone a, a couple times to young life uh, events after football games at a house okay. right by our high school. And it was in walking distance from our house. And there was an older couple, uh, Ralph and Lottie, and they were uh, young life leaders. And I didn't know it at the time, but my brother and I, every night during that summer, we would just go, go over there, knock on the door. They'd be, be there. They would answer the door mm. and they'd have Bible studies with us. They would discipling us and to come to find out they didn't live there they drove 45 minutes from another city just to be there oh, wow. in case we showed up and so i was just that was very impactful for me as far as what is uh discipleship there but um and then the start of my junior year i i went to the before i went to class my first day of class i went to the bible bookstore Bought a bunch of tracks. At that time, it was mostly the, the chick tracks, you know, these old okay. tracks. Loaded. Sure. I had a coat, and I just loaded up tracks. And I was like, all right, I am going to be sharing the gospel with all my friends. And I fire hosed them. I mean, it was probably the worst <laughs> way to do evangelism. <laughs> but uh, even my girlfriend at the time was like, you know, you're going to get arrested. You know, this is illegal. You handing out tracks, you know, and <laughs> and come to find out, you know, that she was a, a Baptist. So I'm thinking, oh, OK, Baptist thinks it's illegal to hand out tracks, you know, <laughs> but I ended up joining the Baptist church and, uh, and getting baptized there. But, uh, yeah, that was just uh, funny how all that uh, worked out. So, so you finally joined a denomination that's a yes. devil worshiper and illegal to pass out tracks. All right. Yes. yes. We're full circle, right? There you go. But my dad thought we were crazy that he even went and bought us a St. Joseph edition Bible because he didn't want us reading that King James Bible. He thought okay. we had joined some cult. I mean, he was, he was so mad. But, uh, but the best part that I remember is, is just the power of prayer is that my mm. older brother, we would go out in our backyard. It was an open field every night and we would just pray for my parents, my mm. brothers and sisters, my aunt and uncles, you know, friends. And we just pleaded with God just to, to open their eyes and just to, to save them. And, yeah. and, and, you know, it, it was a miracle that 
you know, that they all became Christians. So it was, it was amazing. Praise God for that. Yeah. And then the, the Ralph and Lottie that was discipling us, they, they started having Bible studies at our house and they did that for like the next eight years. Wow. Like every Monday. And it would be at different aunt and uncle's houses that when they become got saved, we'd have the Bible study at their house because they were just like so hunger, hungry for yeah. the word. And so it, yeah. it was amazing. Yeah. Oh, man. Praise God. Praise God. So it started with your brother. And uh, yes. I mean, the spirit just moved through mm. uh, your whole family. Yes. It was, Praise it was, God for that. It was, it was uh, amazing. Yeah. Praise God for that. Well, I know you got started, uh, you know, right after a young life and uh, packing your <laughs> jacket with tracks and everything yes. else. But um, I, I, I'm I'm sure at some point, and maybe it didn't, the fire waned a little bit because, you know, <laughs> after finding yes. out it's illegal to pass out tracks. But um, <laughs> how did you, I guess you could say, get started? Um, I, I don't want to say, you know, again, but. Um, <laughs> well, that's pretty much, you know, I, um, you know, I think. You know, it was years later that, you know, I was uh, we moved to, you know, like Austin, Texas from California. And, mm. and I, my oldest daughter, who lived in Austin, invited me to come back to church, you know. So I started going to her church and, you know, that, that the zeal started firing up again. So I did a search uh, just on the Internet. It's like, OK, you know, I'm going to. See if I can get some tracks because I went to there was a couple of Bible bookstores, but I didn't really see anything that that I like. So my first yeah. search was tracks and living waters popped up. Mm -hmm. And so <laughs> I started looking through their website and I was like, and one of the first things that popped up was uh, hell's best kept secret. I was like, mm. OK, what is this? So, all right, you got me. So I I watched the. <laughs> The video on it, you know, and 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 read it, and then I watched uh, True and False Conversion, and then mm -hmm. I had, I think, I watched Hell's Best Kept Secret because I was just like, man, this is mind blow. I had no idea, you know, that, you know, we're using the the law and the gospel, you know, um, and and just from their website, you know, I was sharing with my wife. I was like, yeah, this is uh, life changing for mm -hmm. me. Uh, and it just so happened they were having uh, one of their ambassadors academy workshops okay. in California. And I just was like, hey, I, you know, God's calling me to go, you know, let's let's go. And I had to like twist her arm, you know, <laughs> to go. But sure. we ended up staying at her uh, sister's sister's house and we went to the ambassador's academy. Uh, one of the our group leaders that we had was David Grantham. I don't know if you're OK familiar with him he's uh no. friends with mike stockwell oh uh, yeah lives yeah. in louisiana okay uh and he uh goes on campus at least once a week and he uh preaches at his church but at the time i didn't know any of that but he was like pushing me to uh, to like reform theology like some okay. of the one of the books he recommended for me to read was uh rc sproul's uh the holiness of god mm. And I got a hold of that and got home and I, and I read it and I was, it was life changing again. It was just like, so to the, it was like, you know, people talk about it. It was, it was like being born again all over. Again. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the, <laughs> the fire, the zeal. Um, and, you know, and then I just, you know, uh, found a uh, Christian collegiate network on Facebook, mm -hmm. uh, started talking to, Jennifer Pepling, uh, she got me hooked up, you know, in their ministry. And then I just, you know, didn't know really what I was doing as far as, you know, just stepped out in faith and went on campus. I was scared to death. I thought I was going to get arrested, you know, yeah. they kicked me out, you know, but, you know, I've been there now um, three years and I haven't been arrested yet. And it's just been a blessing to, and, you know, with Christian Collegiate Network, uh, you know, it's not a, a huge uh, ministry, but uh, the brothers and sisters that are there, I mean, it's, you know, it, that we have the, that, that same goal in mind as far as, you know, just proclaiming the glorious gospel and just uh, yeah, you know, talking to students, you know, and uh, helping them to, you know, to, you know, to study the Bible and to, 
you know, in, you know, that they need to be evangelists on their own too. So it's, yeah. it's, it's been an amazing journey. You know, 2019 yeah. was a big year for me. There you go. There you go. <laughs> well, praise God for that. So you got connected with um, CCN, uh, Christian Collegiate Network, Jennifer Pepling. Um, you're on the campus, uh, UT Austin. Um, starting Bible studies, engaging with students. Um, I, I, I want to throw this out here. There, there's a lot of other ministries out there. I mean, there's inner varsity, oh. there's campus crusade for Christ, there's local ministries. I mean, there's, you know, every denomination has kind of a campus ministry, I guess, uh, for the campuses, at least that's what I'm finding out in UW Oshkosh. Yeah. But, but how does CCN really differentiate themselves, I guess you could say, from some of these other uh, college ministries? Yeah. I mean, just on uh, University of Texas uh, mm -hmm. campus alone, you know, going on uh, the internet. There was over over eighty uh, Christian clubs on wow. campus. Wow, eighty! Wow, and you know, and just going around, I was, you know, and I just thought, well, we're all we're all on the same team, you know, we're all <laughs> same goal as far as you know, reaching the lost, you know, uh, you know, proclaiming the gospel, and you know, after being there for that long and talking to the different Christian clubs and asking them. Hey, you know, what's the gospel, you know? Mm. And I would do the, you know, if I had a knife on my back, I got 30 seconds to live. Yeah. How do I get to heaven? Tell right. me. And most of them couldn't tell you. Right. You know, they didn't have a clear gospel presentation. So mm. I think they were more of a social club. And, you know, Christian Collegiate Network is is training students to to be evangelists and to proclaim, you know, the glorious good news. Uh, right. You know, so I, I think that's what separated. We're not the the biggest campus, and I don't think we'll ever be the biggest ministry. Right. But, um, but I don't know. It's just it's been pretty amazing. Good. Good. <laughs> so so what's it entail to be a campus leader? I'm I'm curious. Um, you know, your your campus leader. What does that mean? <laughs> well, you know. Um, I had to, you know, you, you, you fill out an application. I mean, mm -hmm. they want you to, to be part, uh, you know, to be either a member or at least be part of a, of a church, you know, mm -hmm. that was very important. And, you know, and I had to get a letter from my pastor to, yep. you know, the saying the pastor that, yeah, I, I recommend this guy, you know? Yeah. Um, so that was very important. So that was about it. It's just, you know, as far as, you know, I didn't have my master's degree and my apologetics like my friend Francisco. So, you know, but <laughs> I learned from him when we engaged students because he, uh, you know, became a campus leader also. Uh, okay. And the funny story about that is that uh, when I first became a member at the, uh, at the High Point Baptist Church that I started going to, mm -hmm. uh, they introduced the new members, I was standing in front, people were coming around, shaking their hands. And I didn't know it at the time, but to my right was Francisco standing next to me. I oh, didn't wow. Know him. I didn't know him, but I overheard him talking to someone that he knew that after he shook my hand, he went by and they started talking about, yeah, we need to go out and, you know, evangelize and do this. And I'm in my ears, just like, what? Someone else is going out <laughs> evangelizing. And so I asked him about it and he goes, yeah, you know, uh, you know, I'd love to go out and, and do that. And so I invited him to come by campus and we, he brought his oldest daughter and we had lunch and he saw what I did on campus and he ended up becoming a campus minister there. And that's how we became best friends and yeah. uh, gospel partners. So, yeah. So that's how uh, I met him. It was just God's providence. Put them right next to me that day. It's just, it's just there you go. amazing. <laughs> well, it, it's, you know, it is truly amazing to see God work. I mean, oh. you're saving your brother, oh. your brother's been instrumental, you know, it, just kind of moving all the way through, um, oh. you know, young life giving you a zeal, mm -hmm. finding out it's illegal as a Baptist. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, Yes. <laughs> Saving your whole family, uh, coming, you know, getting involved in, you know, CCN. I mean, God's just working throughout your life. Yeah. Um, in that in that way. So I know you're on um, you're on the University of Texas uh, 
campus, what other ministry events or what other, you know, areas do you minister in, in and around Austin? Yeah. Um, from, you know, going on campus, you know, I try to go, you know, at least three days a week, you know, it was like Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Um, yeah. We had started some, you know, you know, when the COVID thing hit, we started doing a Zoom Bible study on on Thursday nights and and we were doing uh, the systematic theology mm. be sprawl. So we did it on Thursday yeah. nights. So we went through this whole, I don't think it was like 60 messages and oh wow. Talked about it and did the, and that was amazing. Yeah. So that was pretty amazing. Uh and then we started going, uh, Francisco and a, a group and other guys, another friend of mine, Thomas Foster became mm -hmm. a campus leader and, uh, he goes out with us all the time. And then we had, uh, David Sebastian, his wife and his kids would come out with us, but we started going to a, a farmer's market, downtown Austin. Okay. And when we first started going to the farmer's market and setting up every time we'd get there, the workers at the farmer's market would call the police on us. So we okay. had the police show up just about every time. For, I don't know. It was like, like four or five weeks straight. <laughs> Finally, they quit calling the cops on us, you know? Uh, but we would, uh, I had a, you know, a flip chart. We do the, you know, test your IQ. We do the good mm -hmm. person test. And then, uh, and then s some of us would do open air preaching. Um, so we did that for a while. And then uh, eventually we, ended up at the Texas state Capitol, which yeah. has been amazing at the Texas state Capitol Cause we get so many visitors from all over from different countries. Uh, yeah, it's, it's just been um, amazing there. So we try to go every Saturday at 11 AM to about three. Okay. And anybody can join us. Uh, it's just amazing that we've been able to go there. Uh, they, since then they've closed down the, the farmer's market, I'm not sure where they relocated it. Okay. But that was awesome too. I mean, we yeah. ended up kind of doing a homeless ministry there, uh, handing out water, Gatorade snacks to mm. the homeless and, you know, and just proclaiming the gospel to them. So yeah, that was pretty amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So, so with the Texas state Capitol being another Avenue that you're at, and I know, um, you know, CCN, your involvement with CCN, you guys did something special this year, this spring. Uh, you oh, guys yeah. 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 Talk about we that hosted, a little bit. <laughs> they do uh, every year. That, uh, it's like either right before or after spring break, they do uh, what is called a campus mission tour. Uh, mm -hmm. I've gone to Pittsburgh, uh, you know, not just this last uh, spring because we hosted it here, but we went to Pittsburgh a couple times. It was amazing. We froze. It was so cold. <laughs> it was so cold. But we went to like four different campuses. We went to University of Pittsburgh. It was an amazing time, a fellowship, uh, you know, having um, you know, Bible studies, praying together. It was just, uh, an amazing time to see other campus leaders. Not a lot of us, you know, there's probably like 10, 15. Yeah. Uh, but it was amazing to get together. And uh, so Francisco, we, we talked about, you know, it was like having our church host it and the church said okay and we hosted it and it was it was amazing time we went to uh texas state we went to university of texas and then uh and then the last day we went to the state capitol mm. it was awesome we had some really good training good food good fellowship it was an awesome time and speaking of francisco <laughs> Ah, uh, greetings. There you go. Yeah, there you go. How you doing, brother? Like, <laughs> glad to have you joining us here. Hopefully your ears are burning, Francisco. We've been talking a yeah, lot about I you. <laughs> I was going to try not to mention his name. <laughs> so, you know, your connections have been, you know, primarily outside of sports fan outreach per se um, yeah. until recently. So um, along those lines, camp, you know, the uh, CCN, excuse me, uh, <laughs> Wow, Christian Collegian Network. There we go. I told you this is live, so there's yes, okay. uh, <laughs> Christian Collegiate Network. Uh, you've been involved in a lot of different ministries. Um, how did you get connected, per se, with uh, with Sports Fan Outreach International? Well, uh, with Sports Fan Outreach, I I kind of you know it was through Francisco. You know, I don't okay. want to give them too much credit online, <laughs> but uh, he's the one that you know that. Um, 
he, you know, kind of joined you guys, you know, I won't yeah. get into, you know, that he left uh, CCN, <laughs> but anyway, uh, so, you know, he went to some training and, you know, I could see the, uh, the change in his open air preaching. It's just, mm. It was like night and day, you know, he went from, you know, exhorting to expository preaching on the stool. And it just, I saw the, a huge change in, in his preaching. And so I would go with him, you know, we went to the UT games, you know, we went to basketball games. And so, and then he invited me to go, uh, to the Super Bowl outreach, and I was able to, since it was in Arizona, I was able to see my my middle daughter lives in Prescott. So okay, we drove. <laughs> and that was a long drive, <laughs> but I, I won't get into that. But uh, we we finally made. I dropped him off. He went to his training, and I went and visited my daughters. And then the the day of the Super Bowl, I, I joined you guys uh, mm -hmm. going out doing some open air preaching, handing out tracks, and that was it. It was amazing. Yeah. So. Good. That's my kind of connection. Sure. With sports fan is is with is through Francisco. Yeah. Yeah. So Francisco's been instrumental. I mean, he's been, you know, CCN. I mean, he was right by you. I mean, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Getting back to it and, you know, introducing new members. I mean, Francisco was right there. Little did you know that uh, you guys would connect together as uh, such yeah. great partners in this. So, yeah. Yeah. No, it's important to, to have that that gospel partner that, that you're yeah. discipling each other. you know, with, they say, you know, iron sharpens iron. Yes. You need that accountability partner. It's so important. You know, yeah. it's, you know, doing ministry alone is not fun, you know, right. But when you have someone else that you could share that joy, you know, and hopefully it, you know, it humbles you, <laughs> you know, that you're not mm. arrogant about it or right. you know, your pride's not all puffed up, but you know, right. just to be humble, just that, you have the opportunity just to proclaim the most glorious news there is, you know? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, praise God for that. Praise God for that. So I, I want to kind of piggyback and kind of transition a little bit. You were talking about, you know, Francisco, all of a sudden going to some training, uh, you were preaching at, you know, maybe a UT game and all of a sudden out of the blue here, you know, here comes this, uh, logic on fire as, uh, Martin Lloyd Jones would have uh, probably <laughs> said, you know, uh, just a change in preaching, and yeah, um, I, I know you you had shared a little bit of background um, at, at High Point Baptist Church with um, you know a pastoral internship as well. So I kind of want to bring both of those in um, to kind of talk a little bit about um, you know in the Isaiah workshop here, our spring workshop. You jumped in and joined the uh, Keep Your Finger in the Text workshop. So talk a little bit about you know what prompted you. How did you kind of get to the point of saying, hey, I want to jump into a Keep Your Finger in the Text workshop? Well. You know, I, I saw the change in uh, Francisco's preaching. And so I asked him, I said, you know, what have you been doing? And he's been, you know, like he's doing the keep your finger in the text. And I think he's he had done the Simeon workshop. I never had the opportunity to do the Simeon workshop. Kind of got thrown into it, you know, without any training. And I do not recommend that. That was that was pretty stressful. But uh, yeah. You know, just him talking about it in the George Whitfield program. Uh, I saw on Facebook that the Isaiah workshop was coming up, and I was like, "Wow, that'd be amazing!" You know, to to preach out of Isaiah. And so, you know, that's how I got started. Is uh, you know, being prompted from Francisco to to join, and I am uh, so glad I did. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, kudos. I mean, you mentioned the Simeon Trust workshops. I mean, they're they're phenomenal workshops. Uh, yeah. You know, they, they help me sharpen my iron, you know, uh, <laughs> as well as I go through it. And they've been kind of a, a spark plug, I guess you could say, um, to be a niche to expository preachers. And then, of course, uh, taking that niche and going a little bit further to open air preachers, which is a smaller yeah. niche, like a one percent of one percent per se. Wow. Yeah. Um, but uh I, I'm glad you joined and I'm glad Francisco urged you uh, to jump into uh, keep your finger in the text as well. I uh, want to talk a little bit about that experience. Uh, your first workshop, of course, um, you talk a little bit about before we get into some of the specifics about keep your finger in the text. I know you said a little bit of a stressful time there. Talk a little bit about, you know, the, um, 
your experience with expository preaching uh, prior to the workshop itself? Yeah, I mean, my experience comes from my listening to my pastor, pastor, not pastor, uh, <laughs> preach. You know, every Sunday, you know, he's he's going. Uh, they'll do a New Testament book, mm -hmm. and Old Testament book, and the, and they goes, you know, chapter by chapter, verse by verse, and so that's my first really introduction to expository preaching was from mm. pastor, uh, Juan Sanchez. It's just mm -hmm. been amazing. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, when I first uh, got into the workshop, you know, the most challenging for me was uh, just learning the different terminology. Mm. It wasn't used to it, you know, as far as the language aspects, as far as the hermeneutics of the text. Uh, yeah. You know, the different, what are the different pronouns and all this? You know, cause <laughs> I mean, I in third grade, I got an F in English. So I went, you know, that's the smartest and in as far as putting together paragraphs and sentences. So learning that part of it is, mm -hmm. is a challenge, uh, the terminology. So that was the biggest challenge. Uh, but the workshop uh, has made it, you have brought it down, I think, to a level that <laughs> at least I can understand. You know, as far as, <laughs> you've made it easy. I mean, with your PowerPoint presentation, and then you give an examples and say, oh, okay, that's how it, that text breaks down. This yeah. is, and, and we take small chunk, chunks at a time each week. And I think that's really helped. Uh, yeah. You know, that we're like you, I think it was the first class, you know, the uh, roadmap to rhetoric as far as, you know, it's like, this is where we're getting, we're starting, you know, it's not a straight line, you know, it, right. it might go around like this, but, <laughs> and that helped a lot that, you yeah. know, we're always trying to, no, we got to get to the cross. We have to mm -hmm. you know, force the text there now, you know, but it might take us a while to get there, but we yeah. eventually do. And, yeah. and that's been uh, helpful is taking small chunks of time because, yeah, I mean, if you did it, you know, a three-day workshop probably to me, I'd be like after the first couple hours on the first day, I'd be okay. I now I can't remember anything, you know. Right. So I think it's helpful to have it, you know, that you do it every week for you know ten weeks, twelve weeks, however you long you do it, that we're able to digest, you know, a little bit at a time, and then you can always review it because you record, yep. you know, your your videos, and it's so it's been yeah. amazing. Good. Good. Yeah. You know, that that's one thing we kind of found out, uh, especially when we're bivocational where we, you know, we have full-time jobs, we have families, we have a lot of those yeah. things um, to really grasp and hone in and make progress as we're continuing to preach. Um, it seemed to fit with, you know, one time a week, that way we just take six days to kind of <laughs> review what we need to and yes. uh, work on it from that way. So I think so, that was the most oh, helpful. That has been the most helpful for me as far as not taking such big chunks at a time. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, good, good, good. Yeah. And, you know, I will tell you, um, for those that are listening, when we're talking about the workshop, it, it's a crash course in like seminary, um, hermeneutics and homiletics all kind of bunched into one. How do we understand a text and what are the tools to get us like kickstarted per se and to continue on in the work? And then how do we communicate it? Um, and of course, there's a lot of other organizations. G3 has the expository, um, you know, preacher conference, and now there are workshop conferences and Simeon Trust and Proclamation Trust over in England and uh, really trying to bring, you know, what we saw back uh, previous um, to like modern day evangelicalism, I guess you could say, bringing back the, the preaching of the gospel in the open air to um, an honorable position. So, uh, <laughs> so what, one of those things is, is, you know, we, we do take a text and you are assigned a text in, uh, in this case, it was Isaiah. Yeah. Uh, and we, we gave you like six weeks, uh, you know, per se to work through it. And, uh, so talk a little bit about what was it like to not only prepare, uh, but also what was it like to participate in the small group presenting your work in front of uh, your peers as well? Yeah, um, preparing uh, was not too bad. I mean, I I did have help from uh, Francisco as far as <laughs> I I can't type, you know. And so yeah. as far as formatting an outline, I was like, 
no, it, it, it would take me months to, to format something. Uh, uh, but as far as the, like the small group, you know, at first I was like, okay, I'm, I wasn't too sure. I was kind of anxious about it, but I tell you the small groups, uh, the, the men that were in there, uh, the brothers, uh, were so gracious, uh, you know, but very humble, a very encouraging, uh, you know, you know, I, you know, I, I always felt that, you know, they were trying to help me, especially me and my first time in mm -hmm. small groups and they were encouraging to the other guys that it was their first time too. So it was, it yeah. was very helpful. Uh, and, and it helped to have other brothers that were kind of talking about the same thing as ours. This is what we're working on. You know, is how did this passage break down? And we're yeah. all say, okay, how did you come to that? You know? And, so it was very helpful. Uh, Good. I, yeah, very. The small group time was 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 very exciting. Yeah, it, it does get intimidating at first because you are. Yeah, putting, I was. <laughs> you, you, yeah, you're putting your work before someone else, and and there it's kind of like an open game, um, you know, to kind of at least provide encouragement for you, which I love to be able to do, and you know, really um, give kudos to the work that you've done. But then just in a gracious way, um, as you mm -hmm. said, just kind of press you on. Yes, it was, uh, so helpful. Um, and just to, to get other guys perspective, it's like, well, how did you arrive at this? You know, so that, that it was all, uh, extremely helpful. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Good. Uh, Francisco chiming in here, uh, Romans one <laughs> Not ashamed of the gospel, for it's the power of God to salvation. Everyone who believes to the Jew first, also to the Greek. Amen. And, and continue that on, you know, for, <laughs> yes. for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. So, uh, yeah. yeah, that's why we're not ashamed because of God's righteousness. So yes. uh, pray, praise God for that. So I want to ask you, um, you know, now that you've been through a workshop, mm -hmm. um, you know, what, what are you going to do, <laughs> for lack of a better term, what are you going to do with it? Um, how are you applying uh, what you've learned in the workshop, the tools, the principles, and strategies? How are you starting to, you know, have that impact, not only uh, you personally, but also in your ministry? Yeah. I mean, after going through the workshop, uh, I have such a better understanding of, if anything else, I, I have a better understanding as, of Isaiah, you know? Okay. Yeah. And so that was, that's been awesome just by itself. But, uh, you know, now when I'm, I'm reading passages in the Bible, reading a chapter, I mean, I, I'm totally reading it different now. I'm looking <laughs> for the words, you know, it's like what came before, what came, you know, how not just to rip it out of context, but you know, what was the original audience? What, you know, what are the different you know, like the hinge verse, what is the argument? Where, you know, where's the God? I, I can't read it now without thinking of these things. Where's the gospel connection? Uh, sure. <laughs> so, that, so that has changed me. I mean, just in this last couple of weeks, as far mm. as uh, reading God's word now is uh, a little more dynamic, I guess, for, for lack of a better word. But uh, yeah, it's just going to help uh, now that, you know, when I open and ever preached, uh, on Saturday with Francisco, I mean, it, it really helped to uh, not just, you know, exhort, but just expound on, yeah. like, I was Romans chapter one and I did Ephesians two. Mm -hmm. And I think it helped in, you know, my proclamation of, of the gospel, you know, just unleashing the lion, let it, let the, you know, the gospel do the work, you know. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Uh, again, some comments coming in, uh, Francisco talking about the fellowship aspect of SFOI. Yes. Um, is what sets it apart. So yeah, absolutely. The fellowship with brothers who are like-minded. Yes. You know, it, that's, that's the beauty. We're all focused in on the gospel. We're all focused in on getting better. Uh, Tom, as you said, talking about the, the proclamation of the gospel and that's what does really set it yes. apart as yeah. well. Um, and then your, your cohort, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, a little bit of a collegiate <laughs> rivalry going on there. So yes. Tom Brewer, thanks for joining us, brother. Glad you're, you're joining into us. We'll have to have you on as well uh, at some point here. Uh, but yeah, uh, I, I saw the post on uh, Facebook and, uh, you know, Francisco said, as you were preaching uh, there on Saturday that, 
uh, just the, the change. Uh, yeah. You were on fire. So <laughs> it was very helpful. I mean, that's probably what get, would get into. Yeah. Like some of the tips that I would have for guys that. Yeah. I'm yeah. sorry. It's your program. I'm sorry. No, no, no. I'm go for it. Go it. for it. <laughs> go for it. If you want to dive in, go for it. <laughs> All right. So, um, so, so talking about one of the other things too, you, you had right away about three quarters of the way into the workshop said, that's it. I'm in. Um, so, so talk about what you're expecting here coming in. Cause you're going to be joining the team on uh, Monday nights. Uh, yes. with taking reps. So talk a little bit uh, about that from your perspective as to uh, what are yeah, you thinking? I mean, what I'm getting, what taking reps is taking it to the next level is taking a passage, not only working through and, and preparing an outline, but actually preparing a sermon. And that's the, I think my next step as far as that, how do we get, how do we, you know, I even asked my pastor, I was like, where do you come up with these illustrations? You know, yeah. and he was like, just experience. Like, well, that's not very helpful. You know, <laughs> isn't there a book you can go to or something like that? But uh, I think it helps that once you have the outline, it's like, okay, what are your, your preaching points of that yeah. text? You know? Uh, and I think that's going to be tremendous, you know, yeah. and I'm excited that, you know, in a year you could have, that many passages of sermons that, you know, they have them in your back pocket and you just, mm -hmm. you know, and you just prepare and that way, you know, you, you preach with confidence, you know, you know, yeah. your texts. Um, and so I think it'd be awesome to, yeah. to do that. And I'm looking yeah. forward to Exodus too. Good. Good. Yeah. Cause it's yeah. a whole different, uh, genres for going from prophetic to, uh, narrative. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm excited. I, I love Exodus. Good, yeah, good. So I'm looking yeah, forward I'm glad to that you, too. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up because that that's the kind of aspect is we kind of bounce all around in the workshops. Mm -hmm. um, and the same thing in taking reps as well. Uh, for that specific point that you talked about, Tom, you know, just kind of exposing you to like prophetic literature, exposing you to narratives, exposing you to poetry, uh, getting you at least somewhat comfortable, um, you know, looking at passages and trying to be able to um, interpret kind of what's going on there. So good. I, I'm looking forward to having you in Exodus, looking forward to having you, uh, in taking reps as well. Um, you talked about tips, so let's go there. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, as far as, uh, tips that have helped me that I've gotten from other people or just, uh, things that I've heard, you know, and, and I see it from Francisco too, as far as, uh, you know, when you get on that box, it's just, you know, is that, is that, you know, prayer is so important mm. when you're proclaiming God's word, uh, that you prepare your heart in prayer. And, and then when you're on the box, just, uh, you know, you need to learn to project your voice, to be confident, you know, have, a people hear the, you know, the pleading in your voice that, you know, that you're serious about this, that mm -hmm. they can uh, feel the, the love that you have for them, that you are warning them, you know, I mean, you know, not that you're, you know, you're, you're preaching the, uh, the, the disease, but if they don't know that they have a disease and you're preaching just a cure, they're like, okay, that doesn't make any sense. So you have to right. preach that, you know, you have a disease, but here's the cure, you know? And so it would, uh, make more sense. So that's my tip is just, you know, if you're new to open air preaching, um, when the, when I went to the ambassadors Academy with my wife, I was so stressed out and nervous about who was going to be the first one in the box. So, so I'm waiting and waiting. And all of a sudden I look and my wife gets on the box first and just starts reading, uh, the Beatitudes. And as she's reading scripture, with her little microphone and speaker. And I just felt, wow, she got up first before me. And, but she was just reading scripture and the tears were just coming down her eyes. And I was like, okay, you know, I need to get over this fear. And I see seeing her do it first, you know, to take that step of faith, uh, just help me that, you know what, I just have to take that step and, and God will equip me. So, yeah, that's really helped as far as, you know, I don't, 
need to know all the answers, you know, if I don't have all the answers uh, in apologetics, especially on campus with students, because they're asking all kinds of crazy questions, you know, mm -hmm. or science and all this stuff, you know, but if I can just say, you know, do you consider yourself to be a good person? You know, mm. have you ever lied, stolen, used God's sure. name, pain, you know, so anybody can do this is just, you just have to step out in faith and, and then God will equip you. Yeah. Yeah. Francisco, uh, chiming in off Nike, just do it. <laughs> yes. Just do That's it. Right. I mean, that's yeah. like the, the, it's called the great commission, not the great suggestion. That's right. right. <laughs> that's right. So a couple more questions for you. Uh, this okay. one's, this one's pretty subjective. Okay. Um, but ultimately, um, if you're listening to a sermon, um, how would you determine, uh, per se, what's a good sermon? Oh, wow. That was a good question. <laughs> um, you know, um, what I've learned, you know, in, in from the workshop too, as far as in your sermon that, you know, that to make sure that you're not taking out of context you know what did it mean to that original audience um and then as far as you know the gospel connection and then to make sure that you know that you are connecting with the christians that are listening to the sermon and then a message to the non-christians mm. that's important uh but again uh i think the pastor has to you know he does a lot of preparation uh, in the week, you know, and yet prayerfully, you know, that he's reading his word, studying it. And, and yeah, it's just uh, that he's prepared. And I think uh, so many times I, you know, would go out and, and try to open air preach, but I wasn't prepared, mm. I would, you know, get on the box and just wing it, you know, but that's our, our, you know, we would know it wasn't a good sermon if our pastor did that every week, but he, right, right. he prepares <laughs> a lot of hours for that sermon to, mm -hmm. to do expository preaching. So yes, it, it takes a lot of work, but in, lo in the long run, uh, you, you know, it's worth it. I mean, we're not going book by book out in the open air, but you know, we're taking a section of scripture and then we're ex expounding on that, you know, to a specific audience that, uh, you know, non-believers, you know, yeah. get them the bad news, good news, you know, hopefully right. it'll come out of that sermon. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you mentioned that a lot of the work that goes into it. And uh, that's one of the things we kind of work through in the workshop is you get to see truly how much work it is Yeah, uh, <laughs> to prepare a sermon. And, yeah. you know, uh, I, I, I praise God for my pastors as uh, they diligently dive into the work. Yeah. It's, it's amazing how much time they, yeah. they put into it. I mean, and their preparation started when they, you know, went to Bible college or seminary. Mm -hmm. It started back then. I mean, yeah. it's reading God's word and knowing God's word. You know. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And and I think the beauty is I was, as you were talking about it, you know, all the preparation work and then what's preaching it. And much like when we preach in the open air, it, it's an iceberg effect. Mm -hmm. You know, you talk about the iceberg. They only say like what the, the top third um, yeah. is what you see really above the water. And that's mm -hmm. really what you do in preaching is you're giving them the best third of everything that you have <laughs> nice. and the other two thirds that nobody else sees was for your own personal, um, you know, edification and sanctification. So, yes. Yeah. Uh, one other question here for you, uh, Tom. Okay. Um, what books or podcasts have been influential and or helpful to you? Oh, um, well, a lot of, you know, RC Sproul's books have been, have been helpful to me. Yeah. Mm. You know, uh, I've, I've listened to a lot of, um, you know, as far as Ligonier ministry has been very helpful with, you know, a lot of their materials on their uh, Ligonier connect some of their, you know, their mm -hmm. Bible studies have been really good. Um, you know, um, yeah, I mean, there, there's so much out there, but you know, it's like, again, and, you know, after in 2019, that's when I, you know, kind of dis discovered reformed theology. And so just, you know, listening to RC, you know, 
Steve Lawson has been a real help. You know, uh, his doctrines of grace through the gospel of John. It's been, mm-hmm. uh, uh, you know, it's just there's, and then Michael Horton, uh, his book, uh, Pilgrim theology has been, mm-hmm. a, and I've, I've listened to it and read it a couple times and it's been amazing. Uh, you know, my own church, they, uh, one of our, uh, pastors uh brady bowman he uh they put on uh a, a yearly teaching it's called the high point institute and mm. and it takes the like a school year schedule and it was every wednesday night from uh, you know for two and a half hours and they would take uh the concept from the michael horton's book pilgrim theology so they were doing the drama drama doctrine doxology and discipleship it's sure kind of like a biblical mm-hmm. theology plus a little bit of systematic theology thrown in there but that was uh an amazing i went through it uh two years ago and i just finished again this year i took it a a second time because first year i went through it i was like okay what is he talking about you know <laughs> <laughs> it was kind of over my head but uh this year it made a lot more sense uh so yeah, I, I highly recommend that if anybody's in Austin that, you know, check out High Point Institute, uh, you know, and, you know, my, my favorite preacher is my pastor, Pastor Amen. Juan Sanchez. I mean, it's mm. amazing. Uh, it's like listening to the best YouTube preacher, you know, but he doesn't go on YouTube. So that's right. You know, yeah. So he, he, he is amazing. That's right. Amen. Amen. I'm glad you said that because uh, ultimately we see, you know, some of the some of uh, the, the giants, you know, that we kind yeah. of see on YouTube and everything else. But, yeah, you know, praise God for faithful pastors who labor oh. in the word and they are some of the best pastors. Yep. Yeah. So, Tom, anything else you want to share? No, I mean, you know, if I recommended someone that, you know, is getting started is just uh you know, uh, get plugged into a, a good Bible believing teaching church, you know, that, you know, that, you know, that's praying the word, singing the word, and, that, and that's preaching the word and, mm. and just take that step of faith. You know, if you have to go out by yourself for a while, then you just, just do it, you know, but, uh, yeah, just be, just be committed to his word, God's commandments to, to go out and proclaim the glorious news. Mm. Take that step. There you go. There you go. Amen. Amen. Well, if you want to get a hold of Tom, his contact information is scrolling down below there, Tom at changercampus.com. You can find him out on the website, uh, changercampus.com forward slash T McLaughlin and his phone number 760-275-0837. If you're in the Austin area, I'm sure he'd love to be able to labor fellowship with you yeah. um, and kind of, help you along, along with Francisco, Tom Foster, some of the other guys uh, that are there. So uh, Tom, stick with me. Thanks for having me uh, interview you, brother. Oh, it was a pleasure, Heath. Always you very gracious brother. I <laughs> praise God for for you and, uh, and you guys' ministry. It's been a bit amazing. Well, thank you. Thank you. So stick with me. I'll just be back with you in a moment. Right. So hopefully uh, you got a chance to hear with uh, Tom McLaughlin. Um, new to the workshops, new to the keep your finger in the text as far as wanting to commit to preaching expositorily in the open air. Uh, He talked about the Exodus workshop. We talked about it earlier. And if you want to join the Exodus workshop, um, come join us as we uh, look to make progress in our preaching using the book of Exodus, using the Old Testament narrative. Um, Easy enough to do. Go on up to sfoi.org. Uh, forward slash keep your finger in the text or evangelist info keep your finger in the text it is starting um, a little less than two weeks away tuesday night uh, june 13th Uh, we are going to spend 12 weeks i know we have a couple holidays in there some other things going on Uh, but you'll definitely want to join in you've heard from tom as to what to expect so if you want to make progress to strengthen and enhance your preaching uh, go ahead and do so jump into that exodus workshop same thing as well taking reps monday nights we're back at it And we're going to be finishing up Romans 4, and then we're going to be continuing on with another text that we are in discussions and prayerfully considering right now. But again, Monday night, 7 p.m. Central Time, 8 p.m. Eastern Time, a great chance to sit under the word. And um, as you heard Tom say, sometimes 
uh, challenge each other with some of the blind spots that we see. But again, going out to SFOI.org, keep your finger in the text, taking reps. If you want to get a hold of me, um, I'm always available for a resource for you. Maybe these avenues don't work out for you. Monday nights don't work out for you. Tuesday nights don't work out for you. Or maybe even the venue. Uh, what I mean by the venue sometimes is um, sometimes in your schedule, it may be too quick of a pace for you. You may need to slow down and work amongst your own um, schedule as well. I'm available for one-on-one -on -one coaching. Love to be able to sit down and set up a schedule for you and help you make progress in your preaching as you strengthen and enhance your preaching. Uh, sermon observations, if you'd like to get some feedback on your sermon as to um, how it went and just kind of under the uh, keep your finger in the text principle, send me a link to YouTube, send me a link to um, Facebook as well. And uh, we'll be more than happy to take a look at that and give you some observations based on the feedback form that we use in our small groups um, as well. Integrating Bible software. I know there's a lot of other training programs out there, but what resources are great resources to have for the different areas of the Roadmap to Rhetoric? Or how can you currently use your Bible software and get the most maximizing out of it? Love to be able to talk to you about that. Again, contact me, heathputzel at gmail.com, heathputzel at gmail.com, or 920-322-5089. Uh, Francisco saying, if you're near Austin, join us. Join them at the Capitol um, on Saturdays. I believe you heard 11 a.m. until 3 p.m. at the uh, Texas Capitol in uh, the city of Austin there. Uh, they'd love you, love to have you come out and join them. So, well, thank you very much for um, <laughs> being with us as we interviewed Tom. Hopefully it was a blessing to you. And keep your finger in the text anytime that you preach. I look forward to seeing you coming up here on Monday nights on Taking Reps. Tuesday nights, June 13th. Hope to see you in the workshop, maybe in an SFOA event or a local event if you are here in Wisconsin. But whatever you're doing, let's keep our fingers in the text and let's keep preaching for the glory of Christ.